sponsored program paid for by Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. Welcome to Rochester Real Estate, featuring Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell. Here's Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Good morning, Andy Brownell on News Talk, 1340 KROC AM and 96.9 FM. It is Saturday morning, and I am with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results. How you, how you doing, Robin? I am doing great. Yes. Continue, I'm continuing to enjoy our fake spring weather. <laughs> <laughs> I'm for it. As long as it can go, I'm for it. Yeah. I, was, I, just, I, was, I said something kind of interesting, though. Somebody told me, I don't know if this is true, but somebody told me this could really mess with the trees because they might start to try to bud yeah. early and then freeze. Yeah, see, there's just so much that gets out of whack. Do you remember that? It wasn't that many years ago we had that issue. Yeah, I do remember that. After he told me, I'm like, oh, I kind of remember that happening yeah. not that long ago. Yeah. And I was talking to Mike Doherty with MnDOT, and this okay. one never occurred to me either, that they're concerned that this early warmth will mess up the spring road weight restrictions because by law... They can only be in effect for eight weeks. So they start them early because of the weather conditions. And then oh, we wow. get a cold snap and snow like we normally do. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, it could put them in a, in a bit it's of a situation. Just, it's, very, it's just very unnatural. It's very unnatural. Yeah. And I spoke to one of my um, clients who happens to be a farmer and asked him if he's concerned. He said, well, we're going to have to get a lot of moisture for sure. So whether it yeah. means that we get some late snow or just a really rainy spring, which doesn't sound good to me, I'd rather take the late snow, to be honest. But I think that the the rainy and cold April has become our norm now. I don't like yeah, it. But... I don't either, but you're right. It is more rainy, that's for sure. Well, anyway, well, <laughs> it, it has continued to, this weather has continued to, I think, um, kickstart our spring market because people who would normally say, I'm going to wait and start my house hunting when the weather gets nice. Well, guess what? It's been yeah, pretty it's, nice. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, the show's not about the weather. It's about real estate. But I guess they're, I had, you know, they are related. They're very related. I had two clients that closed in the last week. And I said to both of them, do you understand how fortunate you are? to have had closing dates at on January 31st or February 6th or 7th or whatever it was and have um, moving days like you've had here. Yeah. Unreal. Unreal. Yeah, instead of trying to carry stuff through a foot oh, and a half God. of snow with a 20 mile wind an hour north wind face. blowing in your face. <laughs> exactly. They're, in their, they're uh, out there moving in sweatshirts. I'm loving it. Loving it's it, so loving bad it. that I was out last night and you know it the low temperatures are above what the normal high temperatures should be. I saw that. I saw and that I, on KTPC. And I said, Oh, it feels cold out here. <laughs> yeah, they said it was like average um we're what we've been dealing with has been like average temps for April. Yeah. yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I, crazy. Well yeah, not the not the Aprils that we've had the last three years, which were right. Cold, right. damp, and wet. But yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, back back to real estate. Yeah, I'd like to say we can control the weather or anything about it, but we can't control that any well, more than I've been able to control the real estate market or the interest rates or the number of sellers or any of it. All I can do is report it, right? And I'm not the weatherman, so I'll move on to, to real estate. Okay. Do you have any statistics yes. you can report? Yeah. So I have um, the most current Rochester market report, which is almost a week old now, but it's still pretty current. Um, in the past six months, so basically through the end of January, okay, okay um, the six months prior starting January, end of January, um, we've had 725 homes close. Okay. okay? And we currently have 163 active and 166 pending. So we have just as many pending, meaning they've already gone under contract and they're moving toward closing as we do have active, a few more actually. So is that a balanced market then at that point? 
Um, it's pretty darn balanced. Yeah. And yeah. so, yeah, what we have is, um, let's see our absorption rate. We've got, uh, we've got about on average three months. Well, not even 1.4 months worth of inventory in the under $200,000 range. Then when it comes to between 200 and 300, we have a half a month. Uh, between 300 and 400, we have 0.8, so three weeks worth. Um, between 400 and 500, we have a month and a half. Between 500 and 600, we have months. Between 600 and 700, a month and a half. So it's not until we get up to 700 to 800 that we have four months worth of inventory. And, you know, we're getting up there in price then. And 800 to 900, another four months worth. And then where we've really seen a slowdown is in the high end, high end. Between 1 million and 1, 2, we've got enough to last us for two years, 24 months. And 1, 2 and 1, 3, we've got eight months worth. Between a million three and a million four, we've got a year's worth. And between a million four and up, we've got a half a year's worth. So, and that's based on what has sold. Right. We're just projecting if we sell the same number, this is how many we have to last us. So, I guess this clearly screams that yes, indeed, we need inventory. The majority of the inventory we need is up to 700,000 because once we get over 700,000, we've got three to four months worth all the way up to a million. Yeah, unless but, you would go way, way to the top end, then there's. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, in the enough, affordable yeah. price range, yeah, in all the way up to seven hundred thousand, the most inventory we have is two point three months worth between five hundred and six hundred. So it still says, you know, we don't have a lot of inventory. Things are selling because we have as many on the market as we have under contract, like almost exactly equal. But also, for my just my memory okay. of the previous times you've gone through the report, the number of active listings is fairly comparable to what we had seen before. Maybe oh, yeah. down, maybe down just a tiny bit, but not, not a lot. And only and, because and, a few more have gone pending. That's why. Okay, and I was going to say that the length, the absor- absorption rate has gotten faster. But yeah, so, that kind of suggests that maybe your demand has picked up a little bit. Right. Yeah, we're getting a little busy. Well, which I've been saying, you know, and it's both the news, you know, every, everybody watches what are the feds doing? And even though they didn't yeah. lower the rates yet, they did opt not to raise them. So that's a good sign. And they are talking very openly about lowering the next time they come together, right? So basically, you know, people are excited. They know what's coming. They know that the rates are going to drop so everybody can take a deep breath. And obviously the economy has remained strong. And so buyer, you know, consumer confidence has continued to rise. So all the while we had lower inventory, we still had higher prices. And I, I, I know I'm not here. I'm back to the weather again, but I will tell you that we have had more buyers out because of the weather. Yeah. The traffic that would normally start more towards the end of February or the beginning of March really kind of started in the middle of January. So, yeah, we're definitely seeing an upward upward uh, trend in homeowners out there looking at houses. You know, what, going we really, and- what we really need, though, is right to get the people who are stuck in the ultra low interest rate mortgages to get unstuck and start looking at selling because of improving conditions. I I wonder what that magic number will be for the interest rates that gets them to go, okay, let's go. To me, it's going to have to be a five something, even, even though that's not that far away, even if it's in the high fives, I feel like people are like, Oh, you know, five is, not, a, I mean, five is a decent interest rate. You and I know we've discussed this many times. Five is a great interest rate. 5.75 is a great interest rate. I mean, historically, anything below 6% is considered a wow interest rate. It's just right. that because of what we've gone through, you know, people have to, they had to swallow a little harder, but it's going to happen. Okay. Uh, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we do a break here and then we can come okay. back and talk some more about a market report. Okay. All right. 
Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group Remax results back in a moment on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Looking for... Welcome back to Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group Remax results and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We are back with Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax results. We started going through the market report. Through the end of okay. January, right? Yeah. So one number that people are always intrigued by is the number of days on market. So let me take you back to the 725 homes that have actually closed in the last six months. Okay. Of those 725 homes, the average days on market was 33 days. Oh, gosh. Okay. 33 days. And so, and even then people said, oh, houses are on the market so much longer. Well, 33 days is 30 days longer than three days. There's no doubt about it. But 33 days is a really quick turnaround time. Um, now, the homes that are currently active and pending have both had a market average of 63 days. So almost double, right? So now it's back to... Put your house on the market. Within 60 days, you'll have an offer. And then within the um, uh, next 30 to 45 days, you'll close. Would that, also, people, would that also be because the homes that already closed might have been, oh, how do I say this, a bit more attractive that they went yeah. off the market quicker? Yep, yeah, that's exactly right. So the ones that maybe are a little overpriced, need a little more work. Again, people had their head in a different place they saw their neighbors two years ago put a house on the market with half the roof shingled and half not and it still sold in a day you know i mean okay that might be a kind of an exaggeration but i'm trying <laughs> to get point across they didn't have to do anything to get the house ready but that's behind us now buyers have more options they can get out there and they can pick and choose and they're going to be fussier. They're going to expect to have that inspection. They're going to expect the sellers to take care of the things that come up in the inspection. And if there's a broken hood fan or a broken microwave, guess what? Don't think it's going to be their problem. Just get it fixed before you put it on the market. Because So that's why some of those houses are sitting on the market longer. And that does skew the average days for sure. But also those six months included the holidays, you know, all the way from Thanksgiving through the new year and things always slow down during that time. So you have to factor all of those things in. But looking at the fact that the past six months, the 725 that actually sold and closed had an average days of 33 days on the market and the ones that are currently pending and for sale have on average 63 days, I'm still going to tell you this is a pretty swift moving market. Oh, yeah. So it's very, very, I think, very um, exciting. You know, it's going to be a great year in real estate, guys. So if you're thinking about it, don't don't wait. I mean, some people have said to me, I'm waiting for the interest rates to come down. Well, that's fair. And I don't have a crystal ball and I can't promise you when that's going to happen or even if that's going to happen. I can only tell you what I'm hearing from the economists across the country. It's the same thing you're hearing if you turn the news on, right? So, but people are um, saying, well, we'll just wait. Well, listen to the whole story because if you wait for the interest rates to go down, then you're also going to watch the prices go up because oh. that hasn't stopped. That hasn't slowed. They've continued to move upward. So if you're ready and you feel like now is the time, let's just get together. Let's figure out who you want to use as your lender. Let's talk about what your comfortable budget is and what that looks like in a dollar price for a house. What kind of equity you have in the home that you're currently living in if you have something to sell because that might be a very pleasant surprise to you. And all of those things factor in to say, okay, bottom line is to get the payment that we want and get, you know, what's projected out of our house. I think this is a good number and that's a great starting place. And then if you look and you see things in that price range that don't meet your needs or it's, you're disappointed, it's not what you 
thought you could get, well, then maybe it isn't the time. But I think you have to kind of test the waters if you really want to know. And yeah. I, I also believe I think people sometimes feel like, oh, my gosh, if I move forward, I'm getting committed. And if I get committed, there's no turning back. And so I also would really like people to understand that's not necessarily the case. You can explore and find out what your house is worth, find out how much equity you have, find out what rate you could get, what that payment would like, look like without committing to anybody. So just know that that's an option. Have the chat. Have the chat. The chat, yeah. the chat. There's nothing better than information, especially yeah, when you're facing you know, facing a decision like this. It's, yeah, it's one know, of the biggest decisions you'll ever make. Yeah. I mean, it's a huge investment. And like you it's, say, if if you hear what you have to say regarding the values and the conditions right now, and you say, eh, no, then check back six months, see where you're at. And I'm going to use this as a um, segue to what I want to talk about next. Okay? okay. I I do not claim and have never claimed to be the all-knowing best realtor in Rochester, okay? Because there are a lot of really good agents in our area. Um, but I will tell you that statistically, I did, our team finished number one in our area again last year. Congratulations. For many, many consecutive years now. Thank you. I appreciate that. So we really are good at what we do. And we really do take a lot of pride in the customer service that we give. And I cannot tell you how proud I am to work for Remax Results because we just had our awards ceremony Friday um, for Remax Results and they shared some really exciting statistics. So number one nationally, the brand Remax is number one per agent productivity. So does that mean we have the most agents? Nope, there are companies that have more agents but we have the most productive agents. And I think when you're shopping for an agent, that probably matters. Um, transactions. Our Remax results is the number one, the number one franchisee in that number one brand. Okay. So that's, that's pretty darn good. Yes, and our, our Remax results has 1,200 sales executives spread throughout 49 office locations. And I'm also proud to say that our Rochester office is the most productive of those 49 offices. So are you hearing me? The number one brand is Remax. The number one franchisee within that brand is Remax Results. And of those 49 offices, the most productive office is right here in Rochester. And of course, within that office, we are the number one team. So I feel like I can brag a little bit because oh, the yeah. Walton, I can say we're the best of the best of the best of the best. I don't know how much better you can get. There but you. okay, I'm having a little fun, but true, those are all true stats. Okay. So our company, Remax Results, the 49 offices, 1,200 agents, sold 21,000 homes last year. Wow. For $7.3 billion in closed sales volume. So we're not messing around. That's the size of some some countries' economies. <laughs> yeah, we are not messing around. And I will also tell you, going across the board with all brands, okay, all brands of real estate in the top 500 brokerages in the U.S., Remax results is number 20. So pretty excited about it that. It is. And the one thing you said of the 49... Right. Offices within your franchise, the Remax okay. results. Yep. You're number one. Rochester is we are the most productive per agent. Yeah. So we are we are selling houses, guys, and we are getting it done. And it's just gonna be more productive this year than it was last year. And last year ended up, you know, where there was a lot of oh whoa, this is bad, things are down. And yeah, those numbers are down from the year before, but those are not numbers that we can buy any means feel bad about and our broker owner uh john colopy would be the first one to tell you that he's pretty darn proud of those numbers well congratulations that is just fantastic i i mean i'm a very very tiny part of all that success but i am so proud to be lined up with this company and to be a part of that so thank you 
We'll take a quick break, Robin, and uh, we'll return in a moment. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group Remax Results, number one. Coming up on News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. We'll be right back with Robin Gwaltney and Andy Brownell on Rochester Real Estate. This is News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back to Rochester. Robin Gwaltney from Gwaltney Group, Remax Results, and Andy Brownell on Rochester's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM. Welcome back. Good morning. Robin Gwaltney, Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. And we are talking about those uh, very impressive statistics concerning Remax Results and your involvement in Remax Results. But Remax Results is just one. Explain to me how this works. It's it's a franchise that's part of Remax overall, right? Right. So Remax Corporate. Um, which was started by Dave and Gail Linegar 51 years ago, is in Denver, Colorado. And they basically don't sell real estate. They sell real estate franchises. In the beginning, they were a real estate office, right? But then they grew and grew and grew because they came on the scene. The only national real estate company 51 years ago when they came on the scene was Coldwell Banker. And Coldwell Banker had... um you know, like pay, basically a 50-50 split with their agents or whatever those numbers were. And Dave Linegar had come back from Vietnam, right, and said, geez, where do I go? I feel displaced. What do I do? So he thought he might become a real estate agent. And he looked into it. He's like, well, how do I make a living if the brokerage gets – at that time, he said – I remember him speaking about this – he would have to start at a 37-63 split. So the brokerage would get 63% of the commission and he would get 37%. He couldn't, okay. imagine, he couldn't imagine how he could make a go of it. So he came up with the idea of just renting desk space and being the broker and taking on the responsibility, but then giving a much larger split to his agents. I, I think it honestly started out at 100% and then they paid monthly. And that's changed over the years but it, it was a, it wasn't something new a new concept right and so it didn't take long before everybody wanted to open an office so he started to sell franchises and now he is the number one real estate franchise in the world and so Dave and Gail have long are long removed from selling real estate and have only sold real estate franchises for many many years so if you want to buy a Remax franchise, it's like buying a Dairy Queen or anything else that's a franchise. You have to pay them fees. You have to follow sure. their rules. You have to do it the way they do it, right? Because they have a brand that they've created and they want to uphold that brand and make sure that when somebody calls on a Remax agent, they have a very similar experience to where they had, you know, in another state or even in another country because, again, we are international. So, yeah, pretty cool thing. And I love, I, I've talked about this before, but I can't say it enough times. I love the network of real estate agents that I have across the country and even outside the country because I literally get together with these people in person three or four times a year and then much more frequently on Zoom meetings and, um, you know, uh, closed like small circle groups and things like that that we'll do either by telephone or Zoom or but we just do a lot of networking so we really keep each other we are th this group of agents is the top 1% worldwide okay so we're considered Remax elite and we actually share ideas we will do um podcasts for other team leads or other broker owners will do site visits and talk. I know last summer I talked to the top 500 agents in Texas and I've got um, a meeting coming up where I'm going to do it virtually, but for 800 and some agents in Colorado. So, I mean, we share what we do. We share our skill sets. We share our practices so that we can all take and learn from each other and become better at our business. So I love that. We just really um, help each other out and we learn how each other do their business. So when I have somebody telling me I'm moving to Denver, I'm like, oh, my God, I have some great friends in Denver with Remax that are 
phenomenal or I'm moving to Chicago or I'm moving to Las Vegas or I'm I, pretty much I have people everywhere because I've been now 10 years within this franchise and very, very active within this elite group and travel to these meetings and really get to know these people on a personal level. So when somebody says, Robin, can you help me find an agent in Jacksonville or can you help me find an and age got still, I'm like, oh my God, absolutely I can. Here's her name. Here's his name. Here's her number. Here's his name. You know, whatever it is. And then I talk to that agent and I say, hey, Don, I've got somebody coming to Scottsdale. This is my client. I've sold them three times. Or this is somebody that called me in on the radio show. It doesn't matter. I want you to take good care of them because I've promised them that's what you're going to do. And so it's like hand off to somebody that's going to be at the top of the you know, at the top of their game. So I'm able to hand people off to people that are going to take good care of them. And with Mayo and Rochester, there's a lot of transition. A lot of people oh, come yeah. and a lot of people go. So I have done this many, many times. And I have had so many people say, oh, my gosh, Robin, you made that transition so easy. I just walked right in and I felt like I knew them and trusted them as much as I know you and trust you. So it was awesome, which is really awesome. I love it. And I, I like that that level of accountability that comes with it too, because of your personal relationship with these people right. that they have an expectation and you have an expectation concerning the people you refer. And yeah, <laughs> that exactly. makes me as the person being referred feel good. Right. And and you feel like you're getting a, a whole, the whole next level of customer care. And that's the whole idea. You know, we are very much relationship realtors. There are, Realtors out there in different brands and different companies, everybody does their business different. But I will tell you at Remax, we are relationship builders and it is what sets us apart from the other brands, in my opinion. Okay. So if you want to build a relationship with Robin. Yes, start please do. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. Give me a call what? on my cell phone and that number is 507 259 4926. And honestly, any way I can help you with any real estate question. Again, should I remodel my house? Who do you know that's a good painter? Who do you know in another state? I want to help you. So please call me on my cell phone at your convenience, and I look forward to talking to you. All right, fantastic, Robin. Thank you so much. You enjoy the rest of the weekend, and we'll talk again next week. Sounds great. Robin Gwaltney with Gwaltney Group, Remax Results. It's News Talk 1340, KROC AM and 96.9 FM.